So where we are then folks, so this is uh, the new camp now, we've never been here before. Um, people often ask me uh, in my videos about uh, leave no trace and stuff like that. And to be fair, when we're in our permissive woodland and we're using the same spot over and over, it's not strictly leave no trace. I mean the fire pits will leave so we know they're there. Um, you know, if, so when we go back to them we know they're there. If any teenagers or anything go in, they'll use them fire pits more than likely rather than making new holes. And then we'll use them until we've exhausted a bit of the resources and then we'll, we'll clean them up then and then we'll move on. But obviously this is a new spot, a new place. Someone's got the roover out. It's a little bit, it's a little bit peaty. So we're going to dig the fire out and then we'll make sure it's all clean and tidy and you'll see you properly leave no trace how it should be done um, when you're just taking a spot once. Uh, same again when we're leaving the, the fire logs as well, you know, sometimes We'll leave the logs that don't get quite, you know, used up. They'll still be a bit charred. But we know we're going back there normally the following weekend. So, yeah. Now you'll see who's doing properly. No trace. I've approximately dug out a hole about three foot by two foot by three to four inches deep. Um, that's and really down to the wet layer, so try and prevent any sort of spreading of the fire. Yeah, you can do it that way with what I'm on about. Okay, so I dug out my fire pit. Got my raft on the go there. Got my next few stages of uh, fire, which is my pencil lead, my pencil and my thumb. Of course I've got a couple of logs there I'm just going to process down now. And then uh, we'll get a fire on. There's the top of a pine tree there, so we'll have got some pine needles here, I think. I'm going to try and um chop these logs into quarters or apes and this will be the fuel wood for the fire Dries a foot. This is what I was talking about. This is a bit of fat wood that I found. 
it's in there, it's all full. So I'm going to split that down, scrape that, and uh, hopefully that will take a that will take a spark off the uh, the ferro wood. The raft below is my dry platform to start my fire on. It also stops uh, drawing moisture from underneath a little bit. And now I'm just scraping the fat wood down into a, a finer dust so it helps get the fire easier. So this is how flammable the fat wood is. I'm now moving on to my uh, pencil size second bundle. <coughs> If at any parts of these stages the fire is struggling, if you just lift your bundles up in the air and let a bit of air get in and oxygenate it, the fire will uh, take a lot better. I'm just adding in here some uh, sticks that contain more fat wood as another X11. There goes in the fun size sticks that I collected. I didn't collect too many on this occasion because I had all the pine inside of me. Um, and now I'm actually starting the process of actually putting some of the fuel wood on. So there we are, a successful fire using only natural materials that I found around me. Um, and this fire, 100% uh, confident, would never go out from this stage now. Uh, the key is just being prepared, you know, have all your resources ready and prepared to go and have good uh, amounts of your free stage tinder bundles and nice should have day, success nice every time with your fire. So we let the fire go out a good few hours before we was leaving uh, and now I'm confident it's not smouldering under the peat and now I can cover it up and make it look like we hadn't been there.
So well then, it doesn't look too dissimilar to uh, what it did when we started. Oh, do anything else that's just lying around? So there we go. Hope that's uh, useful and a good guide to getting a successful fire. It's all in the preparation, and if you put the bit of work in beforehand, it definitely pays off in the long run. Till the next video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.